Hello friends and welcome to a lecture on the use of agrobacterium tumefaciens as a tool for genetic engineering of plants. The agrobacterium tumefaciens is used to introduce desirable DNA into plant cells. Agrobacterium tumefaciens have to be modified to be used as genetic engineers. Agrobacterium tumefaciens is a soil-borne gram-negative bacterium that has a unique ability to introduce part of its DNA into plant cells, that is inserts DNA into nucleus. It is a naturally occurring plant pathogen and has been successfully used for delivering DNA into plants. The introduced DNA contains genes which encode hormones and food products which the bacteria uses to support its own growth. In nature, they cause infection to the host plant and cause crown gall disease on plant tissues. The interaction between agrobacterium and the host plant is very complex. It has been studied in great depth and many of the major details of this interaction have been described. It is this understanding that allowed scientists to convert agrobacterium into a plant transformation vector that delivers the DNA into plant cells. Under natural conditions, the motile cells of agrobacterium tumefaciens are attracted to wound sites by chemotaxis. This is partly a response to the release of sugars and other common root components and it is found even in plasmid cure strains. However, Strains that contain the T plasmid respond even more strongly because they recognize phenolic compounds released upon wounding such as acetosyringone which are strongly attractive at even very low concentrations that is 10 raised power minus 7 molar. Thus, one of the functions of the TI plasmid is to code for additional specific chemotactic receptors that are inserted in the bacterial membrane and enable the bacterium to recognize wound sites. Acetosyringone plays a further role in the infection process because at higher concentrations of about 10 raised to power minus 5 to 10 raised to the power minus 4 molar than those that cause chemotaxis, it activates the virulence genes, VIR genes, on the TI plasmid. These genes coordinate the infection process and lead to the production of proteins, that is permeases, that are inserted in the bacterial cell membrane for uptake of compounds such as opines that are produced by the tumors. Further, these genes cause the production of an endonuclease, a restriction enzyme that excises part of the TI plasmid termed as the tDNA, transfer DNA. The excised tDNA is released by the bacterium and enters the plant cells where it integrates into the plant chromosomes and dictates the functioning of those cells. The TZS that is transzeatin gene on the TI plasmid codes for the hormone cytokinin which helps in the integration. It is important to note that only a small part of the plasmid, the tDNA, enters the plant. The rest of the plasmid remains in the bacterium to serve further roles. When integrated into the plant genome, the genes on the tDNA code for production of cytokinins, production of indole acetic acid, synthesis and release of novel plant metabolites, that is the opines and the agrocinopines. These plant hormones upset the normal balance of cell growth, leading to the production of galls, that is crown galls, and thus 
provide a nutrient rich environment for the bacteria. Dopines are unique amino acid derivatives and the agrocinopines are unique phosphorylated sugar derivatives. All these compounds can be used by the bacterium as the sole carbon and energy source. And because they are absent from the normal plants, they provide agrobacterium with a unique food source that other bacteria cannot use. Under natural conditions, the chemical control of the crown gall disease is achieved through spraying of copper, but it has been discontinued due to its toxicity towards plants. However, the biological control of the disease is brought about through the use of non-pathogenic agrobacterium radiobacter, which is sold as Galtrol and it has been in use since 1973. It was discovered by Alan Kerr in Australia. The use of agrobacterium as a natural genetic engineer requires certain modifications. Firstly, it was found that the tissues infected with agrobacterium could not be coaxed to regenerate new plants and it was realized that it was due to the abnormal hormonal balance. So the agrobacterium strain was used in which the genes encoding the phytohormones, the cytokinin and indole acetic acid have been removed. Once removed, the plant tissues infected with the modified agrobacterium could produce the regenerated plants. This process of removal of genes encoding hormones is called as disarming. The cells containing such a modified tDNA are non-tumorous and readily regenerate plantlets. Gene transfers therefore routinely utilize disarmed plasmid Ti and plasmid Ri. But in some plant species, example soybean, the efficiency of transformation by disarmed PTI is much lower than that by wild type PTI. With this realization, it is a simple step to envision how to deliver genes of interest into a plant. Secondly, the transformation cassette is then introduced into the agrobacterium strain. The introduction of cassette into agrobacterium is a complex process. However, for simplicity, cloning is done by indirect means in which a broad host range plasmid is used which can replicate in both E. coli and agrobacterium. The initial cloning is performed in plasmid and grown in Escherichia coli and the resulting plasmid is introduced into agrobacterium by either conjugation or transformation. The transformation cassette contains the gene of interest and reporter genes for easy identification or selection. Further, it is important to mention here about the use of plant transformation vectors. These are the plasmids which are specifically designed such as co-integrate vectors and binary vectors. The co-integrate vectors are also called as hybrid Ti plasmids. These vectors were among the first types of modified and engineered Ti plasmids devised for agrobacterium mediated transformation. These vectors are constructed by homologous recombination of a bacterial plasmid with the tDNA region of an endogenous Ti plasmid in agrobacterium. The genes of interest are exchanged into the tDNA region of a Ti plasmid, either oncogenic or disarmed via homologous recombination. A resulting co-integrated plasmid assembled by in vitro manipulation normally contains the wire genes, the left and right tDNA borders, 
an exogenous DNA sequence between the two DNA borders and plant and bacterial selectable markers. Now we'll talk about binary vectors. A binary vector consists of a pair of plasmids of which one plasmid contains disarmed tDNA sequence, at least the left and right borders of tDNA must be present, while the other contains VIR region and ordinarily lacks the entire tDNA including the borders. The plasmid containing disarmed tDNA is called mini TI or micro TI, example bin 19 and has the origin of replication in both E. coli as well as agrobacterium. The DNA insert is integrated within the T region of mini TI and the recombinant mini TI is cloned in E. coli. Transfer of recombinant mini TI from E. coli into agrobacterium is achieved either by a three-way cross or by direct transformation of an agrobacterium strain containing the helper TI plasmid. The helper TI plasmid is a TI plasmid having a functional VIR region but lacking the tDNA region including the border sequences. The example is plasmid AL4404. The recombinant mini TI BIN bin 19 is introduced into agrobacterium cells containing PAL4404 either by conjugation or direct transformation. The VIR VIR genes present in helper plasmid PAL4404 include the transfer of tDNA which contains the DNA insert of the mini TI bin 19 into the plant cells. The transformed plant cells can be selected on the selection medium with an appropriate antibiotic. The binary system avoids the transfer into plant genomes of unnecessary sequences which occurs in the case of co-integrate vectors. The essential features of an ideal reporter genes are first lack of endogenous activity in plant cells of the concerned enzyme, second efficient and easy detection, third rapid degradation of the enzyme, example some commonly used easily detectable enzyme producing genes are NOS, nopaline synthase from agrobacterium, LUX, luciferase from bacteria or firefly, CAT, chloramphenicol acetyl transferase from bacteria and GUS, beta glucuronidase from bacteria, extra. The selectable marker genes include those conferring resistance to the antibiotic canamycin NPTII which encodes neomycin phosphotransferase and hygromycin HPT4 which encodes hygromycin phosphotransferase isolated from E. coli. In the laboratory Modified agrobacterium strain is used to infect a particular tissue for plant transformation. The tDNA enters plant cells in a single stranded form and it is immediately converted into a double stranded form. The double stranded tDNA integrates at a random sites in the host plant genome, most likely by a process of illegitimate recombination due to a homology in short segments of the host DNA. If the cell follows the proper developmental pathway, 
that leads to a new plant, every cell in that plant will contain the sequences in between their insertion sequences. The tissues are grown in the presence of the selective agents on the tissue culture media. The tissue culture media also contain the hormones necessary to allow the plant tissues to develop into new plants. These tissues are induced on the medium to develop callus. The callus is an undifferentiated mass of cells. Thus, due to the selection pressures on the tissues, the shoots originating from the tissues will contain the important genes of interest found in the transformation cassette. These plant shoots are later induced to form roots on a specific medium. The small seedlings will then be grown into a mature seed producing plant. Dear students, let's now talk about the applications of these transgenic plants. They are useful for the functional studies in plant molecular biology, gene regulation, identification of regulator and promoter sequences of genes. Secondly, they are useful for crop improvement, developed for important traits of agronomic and economic importance. Thirdly, transgenics are developed which are resistant to abiotic stresses such as drought, salt and biotic stresses such as pathogens. Fourth, the transgenics are developed for high yield and improved quality. Fifth, the transgenics are developed which produce biochemicals which are not normally found in plants. Sixth, the transgenic plants are developed for vaccine production. This is also called as molecular farming. The limitations of agrobacterium tumefaciens are agrobacterium tumefaciens cannot penetrate the cell wall and can only be used upon wounding. So there are mechanical methods devised to deliver the recombinant DNA such as microinjection and biolistic methods. Secondly, the agrobacterium tumefaciens cannot infect monocotyledons, example grasses, but can easily infect dicotyledons, example potatoes, tomatoes, soya bean, etc. But recently some monocots such as corn and rice have been transformed in the laboratory. Dear students, let's now talk about plant breeding and testing. After the transgenic crops are produced in the laboratory, extensive evaluation processes are required to verify whether or not the inserted gene has been stably incorporated without detrimental effects to other plant functions, product quality and the agroecosystem. Initial evaluation includes attention to first activity of the introduced gene, second stable inheritance of the gene, third unintended effect on plant growth, yield and quality. After the plant passes these tests, it will be crossed with improved varieties of the crop so that other important qualities are also gained by it. The initial cross to the improved variety must be followed by several cycles of repeated crosses to the improved parent, a process known as back crossing. The goal is to recover as much of the improved parent's genome as possible with the addition of the transgene from the transformed parent. After this, the plant is put through the process of multi-location and multi-year evaluation trials in greenhouse and field environments to test the effects of the transgene and overall performance. This phase also includes evaluation of environmental effects 
and food safety. Dear students, let's finally talk about the public controversy about the transgenic plants. The introduction of transgenic plants into the agriculture has been vigorously opposed by some. There are a number of issues that worry the opponents. One of them is the potential risk of transgenes in commercial crops endangering native or non-target species. The examples are first, a gene for herbicide resistance in maize if escapes into a weed species could make control of weed far more difficult. The gene for Bt cotton escaping into the pollen might endanger pollinators like honeybees. Till date, field studies on Bt cotton and maize show that the number of some non-target insects are reduced somewhat but not as much as in fields treated with insecticides. Another worry is the inadvertent mixing of transgenic crops with non-transgenic food crops. Although this has occurred periodically, there is absolutely no evidence of a threat to human health. Despite the controversies, farmers around the world are embracing transgenic crops. Currently, in the United States, over 80% of the corn, soya bean and cotton grown are genetically modified. These are principally used to provide resistance to herbicide glyphosate, which is also called as Roundup Ready, thus making it practical to spray the crop with glyphosate to kill weeds without harming the crop. Resistance to insect attack by expressing the toxin of Bacillus thuringiensis. With this, we conclude the current topic. Thank you very much.